Fun factor isn't applicable. There is no combat to speak of. Disco Elysium is essentially a long string of choices, some of which involve violent actions on the part of the player, but there is no combat mechanic in this game. It's better to think of Disco Elysium as a point-and-click adventure with a really high amount of player agency, not as a traditional modern RPG with turn-based combat. Mechanical depth and longevity is great. Disco Elysium took me about 30 hours to finish, although I've heard it was even longer for some people. The game also has plenty of replay value, bringing up the total play time to about 120 hours, and that's something I'll talk about later when I get into player agency. Mechanical depth is something I sort of take issue with. The puzzles of Disco Elysium are mostly solved by simply interacting with items and putting more XP in certain stats. The only time you really need to use your head is when you're actively trying to keep a conversation from escalating into a shootout, which doesn't really happen that often. Level design isn't applicable. This is honestly more out of confusion than anything else. I'm not really sure how to talk about Elysium's level design because the game only progresses through conversation, not movement around a map. There are hidden items, but you can see everything you can interact with simply by pressing tab, so the illusion isn't there. Feature necessity and balance is a mixed bag, and I'll give it an average score overall. Disco Elysium is really tightly designed as far as RPGs go, probably because it's also a puzzle game. It teaches you pretty early on that there is no such thing as pointless information, so you end up just completely scouring the city for any kind of a clue. Disco Elysium also has stat boosts associated with drugs and clothing, and those can give you an edge when you engage in a skill check, some of which are necessary to pass in order to finish the game. That last part is one of the game's most unfortunate flaws in my eyes. It has the same problem as System Shock 2, in that it's a game with a really substantial amount of freedom, which is then crippled by late-game problems that force you to build a character a certain way. There's a skill check towards the end that very nearly made me end the review early, in which you have to have something like 15 or 20 points in the Shivers stat just to enter a building. With the way my character was built, I only had something like a 20% chance to get it right, even with a ton of stat boost from clothing and side quests. The only way past it at that point is through save scumming, and it simply isn't okay when you have to loophole your way through a game just to finish it. Consistency and controls are not applicable since this is essentially a point and click adventure game. Voice acting isn't applicable. To be honest, I just didn't like the voice acting in this game, so I turned it off. The good news is that you really don't need the voice acting anyways, because the entire game is pretty much text-based. Unpredictability is excellent. Disco Elysium practically sets it up for you. Your character got so unbelievably drunk one night that he lost all memory and all concepts of reality, like money, clothing, and time. And from that point onwards, the game is just wildly unpredictable, simply because you just don't know anything thing about yourself or the people you supposedly work with, and the game plays that particular fiddle until the very end of the game, and it works perfectly. Coherence and world building is perfect. I started reading Dune over the summer. It's a book set in this really awesome universe that has the society of the medieval era with the technology of the future. Dune is generally regarded as a masterpiece between the sheer scale of the tale it tells and the minute detail that goes into its setting. I really have no qualms in stating that Disco Lee is just as good as Dune in that regard. The world building is just phenomenal. Literally everything you could possibly think of is laid out and pieced together. From the politics, to the currency, to the futuristic but also not futuristic technology, to the names of foreign nations, to the inner workings of a role-playing game that fell through mid-development. Everything is there and it's beautiful, as if it's a documentary about the tragic fall of a communist state. Characterization is a mixed bag, but I'm giving it a 4.0 overall. The good, the characters of Disco Elysium are all decently memorable, and because of this game's intense attention to detail, they all have distinct personalities that you can play off of to get under their skin and get the answers you need. The bad, the amount of character development is minimal. The detective is the worst out of the bunch in this regard. We learn everything about him throughout the story, but there's no real evidence that he's actually changed by the end. Most of the other supporting characters are the same way. Kim Kitsuragi begins and ends a stoic observer to your every 
reaction, and the others are simply there to interrogate. Thematic strength is perfect. Of significant importance to the game is a communist revolution that took place 50 years prior to the game's events, a revolution that was utterly shattered by a coalition of the world's different nations, its last city completely leveled and left to rot afterwards by the powers that be. You could almost say that Disco Elysium is like a broken mirrored interpretation of the 1917 Bolshevik Revolution, except instead of the Allies leaving Russia alone during the Great War, they instead decided to band up with the rest of the world and beat them into submission. The end result is honestly really grim. When the blood-colored paint of this portrait dries, it shows a city simultaneously enslaved and abandoned by a foreign power, rotting from the inside out. In truth, Disco Elysium has plenty of messages to pass on about humanism, unionization, the merits of capitalism and communism, the impending end of the world, old age, modern racism, and religion. But above all else, I think Disco Elysium is a somber take on the treatment the rest of the world has historically received, or in some cases still receives, from the United States and the rest of the first world countries. Art style is excellent. The backgrounds of Disco Elysium are pre-rendered and seemingly hand-painted, which gives Disco Elysium a distinctive rustic look. I'm not a painter, and I don't feel like embarrassing myself by speaking in prose, I just think it looks nice. Animation is average. Not much to really say here, since there isn't that much animation in the actual game, it's all just walking animations and some primitive combat animations. Sound is excellent. Disco Elysium builds most of its atmosphere through sound, and the studio behind it has done a brilliant job of capturing the peaceful, somber, and depressing soundscapes that Disco Elysium relies on. Revachol is a coastal town, so you'll hear the sounds of seagulls and crashing waves, but there's also a distinct lack of human commotion outside that gives Disco Elysium a unique sense of isolation during exploration. Bug severity is low. Disco Elysium is well constructed for the most part, with only some small bugs popping up every now and then when the player character AI doesn't quite know where to go. Go. Soundtrack is excellent. Much like the soundscapes of Disco Elysium, its soundtrack is also quiet and minimalistic, though definitely not poorly designed. There's a lot of processing done on some quiet vocals and loud acoustic instrumentation, which gives the soundtrack a very lonely, isolated feeling, which meshes very well with the sad thematic content of Disco Elysium, as well as the soundscapes that support the entire thing. I don't really think the soundtrack is perfect, though. For example, whatever's playing in the whirling in rags just isn't very good, and there's some other songs that aren't very good either, but I just can't remember them. Microtransaction fairness isn't applicable because Disco Elysium doesn't have microtransactions. Atmosphere is perfect. I covered this in the polish section already, but the soundscapes and soundtrack of Disco Elysium combine to create a really fantastic sense of place in which you feel extremely lonely despite having a second police officer by your side at all times. Player agency is perfect. Disco Elysium is a classless RPG in which you put experience points into 24 different skills. Some of them affect simple things like health and morale, but most of them essentially decide which actions you can take. There's a bunch of different skill checks within Disco Elysium, and your stats decide how much of a chance you have to complete that skill check. Most checks can be reopened after a player talks to a certain character or puts points in the corresponding skill, but some can only be attempted once. In addition, there's skill checks presented as narration from the detective's mind, which are automatically attempted as they become relevant. They open up hidden dialogue options and can give you advice on on what to do next. This means that the story itself changes around your character build. Someone with no psyche points might crumble in situations where they need to assert their authority, but someone with no intelligence points might be useless in any kind of situation where they need to talk themselves out of getting shot in the head. In addition, there's also such a thing as having too many points in a certain stat. For example, Disco Elysium warns that characters with too many points in the reaction time skill will be prone to making snap judgments that aren't exactly thought out very well. The entire skill system is extremely cool, and it's the source of all of Disco Elysium's replay value. Take any kind of a character you can think of, make them in Disco Elysium, and watch the story unfold in a different fashion each and every time. It's just a shame that the game gates its ending behind a skill check you may legitimately not be able to finish. Innovation is great. I'm having a hard time pinning down exactly what kind of game Disco Elysium is. I can't call it a puzzle game because there's a lot more to 
to it than just solving puzzles, but I can't call it an RPG because there is no combat, and there just isn't any real adventure. Disco Elysium has either brought an old genre back from the dead, or it's created a brand new genre for itself. Pacing is poor. Disco Elysium is very pen and paper inspired, but perhaps it goes too far when it comes to the way you're supposed to advance time in this game. Time only moves forward on actions, and it's usually only by a few minutes at a time. This gets extremely frustrating when you run out of things to do. It's supposed to suggest that you haven't really done everything, but it's easy to forget exactly where you haven't explored. Plus, many quests only open up at a certain time, so you just end up walking around the world for three hours searching for quest items that don't exist. The game lets you read books to pass the time, but they usually only pass about an hour per book, and there's not many of them in the game. This makes it easy to skip time by reading the same book over and over again, but this feels extremely cheap. Really, I don't see why they wouldn't just give you the option to rest for a certain amount of time, or simply let time automatically pass while you're out exploring. The way it is now, the game feels fun when you're rapidly solving the mysteries of this particular case but then it gets extremely boring after that rush of information stops. I really can't express enough that the inability to skip large amounts of time was the single biggest problem in a game that could have been one of my absolute favorites of the entire year. Overall, Disco Elysium earns a 17.5 in gameplay, a 23.0 in narrative, a 20.5 in polish, and a 20.0 in the miscellaneous category. This gives Disco Elysium a score of 81 out of 100, placing it in high tier, in between Hypnospace Outlaw and Project Cars 2. Its closest actual rival to its south is Hypnospace Outlaw, which originally had a score of 82 out of 100, but I updated it to an 81 out of 100 since my scoring system has changed pretty frequently in the months since that particular review. Whether you want Hypnospace Outlaw over Disco Elysium is really a matter of preference. Hypnospace has much better puzzles and I think it's funnier than Disco Elysium, but it's also a lot shorter and it has no real replay value. To Disco Elysium's north is Persona 5, which has a score of 85 out of 100. Persona 5 really doesn't have the same amount of sheer freedom that Disco Elysium has, and it also doesn't have nearly the same replay value from what I can tell, but the game Gameplay is generally better, and its art style and soundtrack are a lot more interesting to me. Even though I've given this game a high score for this channel, my overall acclaim for Disco Elysium is a little more subdued than most reviews that I've seen. I really think this game has some nasty pacing issues, especially in the early parts of the game which barely holds your hand. In addition, the later pieces of Disco Elysium undermine the agency offered to the player by placing mandatory skill checks that require a lot of points in one specific stat, which is lethal if you're not focusing on that particular set of skills. Still, Disco Elysium presents a dizzying array of possibilities created by its classless stat system, and a narrative so thoroughly detailed you'd think it was ripped from an actual novel. Even at $40, which is a lot to ask for the debut game from a completely unknown indie developer, Disco Elysium is very much worth your time, money, and attention.